Hey everybody, this is AJ from I Can Relate to That Podcast, heard on from heard on Apple, Spotify, Google, Podbean, iHeartRadio, Pandora, all the major podcasting platforms. The name of the show is I Can Relate to That, and our direct website is linktree.com forward slash AJ and Bax, and it's spelt after the slash AJ A N D B A X X. And go to that website there, and you could choose which platform uh, you want to listen to our show on. All right. So as uh, so some of our loyal listeners probably uh, heard that uh, I'm interested in just trying the RV. It's another thing on my bucket list. So this is my take of the Cruise America RV. Uh, we rented through them. This is their going to be their larger uh, rig. So uh, before we do that, I'm over here at the Cabana Club RV Resort in Arbordale, Florida. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this camera around. And this is the Cabana Club, as I mentioned. And this is a brand new RV resort, brand new. I mean, this is uh, another phase going on back there. Uh, they're gonna extend it all out. Uh, definitely spoiled. Uh, it definitely uh, made my trip, uh, you know, my, my week here. Uh, enjoyable uh, they have a lot of activities here uh, this particular resort's got all these activities i got the uh, resort style pool way off in the distance uh, arcade laundry clubhouse water slide a little water park mini golf tiki bar i mean i'm spoiled <laughs> i i guess my expectation is going to be high anywhere else i go after this but but um this is my take on uh, cruise america and uh, sit back and relax and let me just show you the actual rig itself let's start before i show the uh, cruise america rig i just want to thank all the youtubers uh you certainly helped made my research uh a lot easier and the do's and don'ts and what to expect when you rent through cruise america i do appreciate that so i there's a um, i see there's probably about like 30 40 videos and believe it or not i watched every one of them so um there's a few things that was not covered in the videos but i will cover in this video so um just a handful of things nothing major but this is my take being a first time rver never been in a motorhome before and uh just give it a try and see if i like it and so far i'm having a nice time it's nice to get away from the hustle and bustle of life and spend time with the family and just take it as it is all right so let's get started and let's take a look at the cruise america 30 foot one of their largest ones you can rent through cruise america all right, all right. so this is the uh uh ford chassis uh, i think this was a 2019 uh we rented it with uh like 59,000 miles on it so they do get a lot of use out of these motorhomes before they uh, put in the sales department. Uh, I think it's usually about three to four years and they finally retire them anywhere from 110, maybe to 130,000 miles on it. Uh, fairly, this uh, unit particularly is uh, 2019. It says it in the door jam. That's how I uh, figured out what year this was. And it's got about, you know, 57, 58, 59,000 miles, miles on it. and. Uh, all right, so let's just get to the nitty gritty. All right, so this is a Ford F450 V10 engine. Um, typical Ford chassis. It's like a larger, you know, like an ambulance type style or a, uh, you know, a city owned uh, work truck or a commercial vehicle. So it does have all the safety features as far as the uh, airbags and uh, the comforts of inside a cab, such as air conditioning and AM FM stereo, just the basic, nothing spectacular about it. All right, so I did make a list with Cruise America for Cruise America to review uh, when we return our unit. Uh, these uh, mirrors here, for example, uh, they're turnout mirrors. And if you do see water dripping, that's from the uh, air conditioning unit uh, dripping down, so it's not raining out. Either way, uh, they do have power mirrors. This particular model, the power mirrors weren't act working correctly. Uh, you turn and press the button to turn it in, but you can't go back out. So you physically have to roll down the window and, uh, or press the down button on the window and uh, manually push it and then maybe fine tune it with the button. Hopefully that was just some sort of defect with this particular, particular unit. Uh, it's, it had happened on both sides, so I had, uh, had somebody sit in the front seat and push the mirror up, down, left, right. So uh, this is the typical over the cab. Uh, I 
guess they, I guess you want to call it Granny's Attic. <laughs> I guess what U-Haul calls it, but there's a, there's a bed up there. So let's do a quick walk around. I don't know if it's gonna be quick, but uh, we'll, we'll take it from step by step. All right, so we got our panels on the side here. There's plenty of different type of panels. Uh, we'll start with this one here. Uh, it does come with a onboard generator. It's a 4,000 watt uh, Onan. Uh, Cruise America does charge uses for it. There's a little meter on the inside panel. Uh, they do charge as of today. Uh, this is uh, uh, May, oh, I'm sorry, this is June of 2021. And uh, it's $3.50 per hour. But uh, if you don't have to use it, don't use it. Uh, they do recommend you to ch check the oil every six hours. And apparently this particular one, uh, I don't think anybody checked the oil on this one, so it'd uh, be recommended to uh, check the oil because it doesn't have very much oil in it, uh, according to the dipstick. But the, that panel does come off. So uh, the exhaust pipe, uh, that's just just be careful when you're going over a low-lying uh, off-roading type deal. You know, and not off-roading, but you know, uh, you know, any inclines or whichever, because you don't want to take that muffler out. But this is the uh, the generator. Uh, we'll start it up in a little bit to show you how that works. It can be started from out here, and it can be started from inside the rig itself. So, and that front panel does come off with the oil dipstick. So, panel number one, and these do lock. They do lock, so I'm not going to lock it right now. This here is the service access only. Uh, this is where the house batteries are stored. Uh, house batteries are everything inside the rig as far as the lighting and uh, I know the heating as well it does operate off the house batteries but you know obviously with the battery you only got a limited limited amount of time on it there, there's a sticker inside you know uh, if you're not plugged into shore power or a generator uh, you probably get at least an hour and a half almost an hour and a half of uh, heating time if you want to uh, do it in the winter right above here is the uh, hot water heater. I'm sorry, this is the thermos. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 um, the heating for the winter time, I'm sorry. This is for the heater, okay? Uh, it's nothing access in here, just closed. Uh, this here is the hot water heater. Um, just uh, pop this open, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Uh, not, I'm not familiar with this, but uh, this is where the hot water gets hot. Now, I know it's a six gallon tank, a holding reserve um, if it does ever leak on you there's a valve right here uh, maybe it's leaking from there uh, because that's how you can winterize these things by taking out the hot uh, the water out of the tank so the ice doesn't expand and crack it and it does make some uh, noises so when you're out here and you hear like a, a boiling type noise then um, yeah it's, it's an operation it does get hot so just don't burn yourself as you hear that noise. All right, right below it, this is the sewer connect. This is where the uh, gray and uh, uh, gray and black water. Uh, their hoses at Cruise America. Uh, I see some videos of people uh, have to go out and buy a hose. Uh, this one here, uh, this is not really the greatest shape, uh, but there was no leaks. Uh, the only problem I was having, uh, again, this is probably just for this particular unit, uh, along right here, the hose popped right off. Um, I was able to catch it just in time as it slipped completely off, and yeah, you don't want to make that too much of a mess. So uh, the left uh, the valve over here, I do have it open. Um, you're not really supposed to have it open, but we use a lot of water because we have a family of four in there and I have to drain this thing almost twice a day. Um, so I leave this, uh, the gray water. Gray water is basically your uh, sink water, bathtub water, uh, anything, uh, shower water. And the black one, now use your imagination, a toilet only, toilet only water. So what I recommend you to do is, uh, when you empty out these tanks, uh, you hook up this line and hook it up straight down to, in this case, uh, this particular RV resort has a sewer connection on site. Um, I'm a little bit concerned because this is the only size hose they give you. So, uh, some sites, from what I understand, sometimes their sewer lines are a lot further from where you can park the RV. And you may have to be 
may have to get an extension or drive a little closer, but every site is different. I had to move the rig a little bit more to compensate the length of this hose. I do have the hose in that valve thing, uh, probably about, uh, I wanna say about a foot and a half down. This way it doesn't you know, spray out when you drain the water. And I do recommend, I didn't bring it with me because I forgot to, um, bring a brick with you like a paver brick or a red brick or whichever and put it on top of that uh, orange cap because you never know that the pressure of the water you know happens with the, to a garden hose when you turn it on it sprays all over the place so that's what I would recommend it's completely optional or have somebody holds down with their foot as you drain everything so getting back to this so uh, in order to drain this tank you need to pull the black valve first and all the debris from the toilet goes down that pipe and then pull the gray valve there to the left and that will drain all the water and basically clean up this uh, pipe here so this next to here uh, shore power line all right so in here is where you store the actual uh, 30 amp wire uh, when you're not hooked up to land power you actually plug that plug right into that outlet there that is connected directly to the generator that's how the RV gets its power now it does come with this uh, little uh, adapter this little adapter is basically a typical uh, 15 amp wall outlet uh, wall outlet uh, thing that plugs into the shore power we did use this when we were at my house uh, setting up and it was just enough believe it or not to run the air conditioner and run the refrigerator. Now, every house is different. Um, I did happen to have a 20 amp outlet uh, at my residence that was just for, um, for outdoor use and nothing else was connected on it. So I was able to run those two appliances without popping any fuses. But disclaimer, use the proper extension cord. Uh, typically, you know, the thicker the gauge, the better. So your standard extension cord uh, that you would use outside to uh, do landscaping with or cut hedges with, you know, those 50 foot ones. I don't recommend it because they get pretty, pretty hot. I did have a heavier, heavier gauge extension cord, uh, more for commercial use. That's what I recommend to use. And even with that alone, it still get did get warm. So uh, in this case here, we're on shore power. Uh, at this particular RV resort, uh, they do charge uh, if you're here for a month or longer, uh, they do charge for electricity, but if you're here for a short amount of time, then it's built into your uh, rate, uh, daily rate. So this here, so you will plug in your 30 amp. So this particular site is got a 50 amp, which is that outlet to the left. The middle one there where the plug is, that's the 30 amp. That's what my uh, Cruise America rigs use. And you have a 120 uh, volt outlet. I think that's, a, that's also a 20 uh it looks like it says a 30 amp and that switch up there is 20 amp i think that operates that light and i'm not sure about that outlet but everything everywhere is different okay so uh this is a fairly brand new um uh a park and as you can see by the meter it's only this meter has only been used uh 1019 kilowatts of power so uh it's a fairly new park so just to give you an idea for those who are tech or number savvy or energy use savvy so the air conditioner uses approximately 1800 watts of electricity um, i did put a um, uh, an amp meter uh, onto the extension cord uh, just to see how much power is drawn so the air conditioning when it's in use does use approximately 1800 um, uh, watts of electricity that also includes the refrigerator when it's running so just the air, air conditioning alone, you're probably using uh, roughly about 1,500 watts of electricity. And you're pulling approximately about uh, 17, 15 to 17 amps of uh, power. That's why my fuse never popped at home because it was on a 20 amp circuit. But just keep an eye on that because the wire does get hot. Um, you know, if you're uncomfortable with it, then don't do it. Uh, mainly this is just here to plug the refrigerator in and the refrigerator itself uses approximately 350 watts of electricity so basically three three 100 lot watt light bulbs plus a 50 watts just to put that into perspective all right also uh nobody covered this in any of their videos okay it's hockey season i love hockey and 
I don't want to miss my uh, local hockey team uh, in the playoffs. So this particular RV resort does have a um, coaxial for TV. So I ended up going to Walmart and I bought a 15 foot, maybe you could do a 20 foot, depending which park you go to uh, for TV. So basically you plug in your TV cable and nobody cover this. The inlet for it is actually in the shore power and it does say cable or something to that effect there. Uh, but yes, that's where the cable goes and then it goes inside the actual rig itself. All right, so these tires, um, I do recommend to bring a uh, air pump because before my trip, um, I did hold a commercial driver's license for many years, so pre-tripping is important to me, making sure everything looks good and all that stuff. Um, the tires were underinflated. Um, they were roughly about 68 pounds before my trip uh, per PSI. Uh, the recommendation according to the sticker, and again, every rig is different. This one recommends about 80 pounds, so I did have to inflate the tires. And don't forget, there's double tires. So not necessarily you have to do the outer one, you got to do the inner one. So just look for the little stem valves and hook up your air pump to that. Make sure you have 80 pounds of uh, pressure. And it's got to be cold, not just not driving off the highway and then uh, because obviously heat expands it. All right, so uh, this is unleaded fuel only, okay, not diesel. You know, there's a debate out there. I mean, this does have a Ford V10. Uh, it's it's sufficient enough and again this is my first time RVing this is my perspective so I never had anything else uh, so but it does take unleaded unleaded uh, uh, the cheaper fuel and unfortunately gas prices have gone up since January but that's a different video all right over here is the storage area for the hose this is where you put the store the um, the sewer hose so that just stores it right in there pretty self-explanatory and just closes all right, you got two uh, connections up here. Uh, one connection here is a fill tank. The fill tank is strictly for, uh, the, they have like a 40, 45, pa uh, 45 gallon uh, water, fresh water tank. Uh, Cruise America does fill this up for you uh, before you rent it out and they do expect it to be filled back up. Um, when I did get to my residence, uh, there is a valve that you could drain the hot, uh, the uh, water tank because I didn't want to carry the extra weight. You know, I mean, eight pounds per gallon times like 40, that's, that's a lot of weight that I really didn't need. I just did keep a little water in there, but in case we need it from, you know, we, uh, in case we're, you know, on the side of the road or whatever, we need it for toilet or washing hands, then I kept a little in there. But uh, over here is the city water connection. Um, RV parks are known for their crazy uh, water pressure from what I heard, according to all of my YouTube buddies. I know I don't know you personally, but thank you for uh, sharing as well. Uh, they show in the uh, pressure sometimes are too strong versus a typical residential. So I actually went on Amazon uh, because I do plan on buying my own rig pretty soon. Um, this thing here is about $9 off Amazon. It's a uh, pressure regulator. It regulates it to about 40 pounds. Does it work? <sighs> I, I don't know, but there's more, there's other ones out there that's a little more expensive and ones with filters on there. I mean, again, this is just a rental unit, so this is not for my personal, you know, my personal rig, but uh, it, when I get my own personal rig, I'm going to get a, uh, a surge protector and a, a nicer filter system with a pressure gauge and all that stuff. But for, for, for our trip, it's sufficient. All right, so this is the uh, basement of the rig. I'm going to go around and I'll show you from that side. Uh, because it's locked right now. Uh, they t this is all storage back here, okay? Uh, there's no backup camera, unfortunately. Uh, you know, it's the year 2021, and backup cameras have been around since, what, uh, the year late 2010s, 11, 12, 13, around there, when they start requiring them. I'm not sure why they didn't put a backup camera, but on the flip side, they do have these uh, alarm radar things. You know, uh, just my recommendation no matter how good of a driver you are just get somebody to spot you that, that, that's all you know just make sure you're not going to run into a power pole you know or, or the barbecue or whichever or a tree or whatever like somebody here <laughs> somebody here uh, didn't have a spotter but uh they do have a uh i think it's a class 
S2. Don't quote me on it because I don't know too much about trail hitches. Um, I did end up buying a bicycle rack, a four person, a four bicycle rack. Now, Cruise America, okay, uh, my local, the local franchise where I picked it up in Tampa, Florida, was going to charge me $25 a day just to use this, uh, this uh, thing. Uh, I knew, doing my research, that was not the case you know just be careful don't get taken for at these local uh franchise they're, again they're a franchise they're not they're part of cruise america but they're not corporate cruise america unless they're a corporate office but the franchise that i picked it up at uh was going to charge me 25 dollars a day so basically cr according to cruise america as of june of 2021 uh the, these things are locked Okay, so when you get to the, uh, uh, the the rental place to pick it up, they have to take this pin out. This is a locking pin. Apparently, they have the key for it, and then um, you have to hook up your um, your bicycle rack. Uh, at least I did had to had to do it in front of the person, but uh, they just uh, unlocked it. Um, but basically, Cruise America says if it has wheels, then you get charged. So in other words, if I was towing a trailer or towing a car, yeah, I get it. You're going to charge me $25 a day because that adds extra wear and tear on the motor and the transmission and whatever else it is. So don't let them try to bamboozle you and charge you $25 just to put a bike rack on the back. To me, that's not worth it. I'll stick the bikes inside the rig. But, you know, if you stick the bikes in the rig, you do run into risk of, you know, damaging the furniture or whatever, you know. So... Uh, if Cruise America, you're watching this, and I'll make sure all your franchises or your locations know that if it doesn't have wheels, then you don't charge. Obviously, this is a bike rack. You're not putting additional wear and tear on the vehicle. These are LED lights. Uh, I love LEDs. I think they're super bright, um, but they're your typical LED lights. Nothing more to say. You get the market lights on top. All right, so this size side here is, I like to call it the basement. Don't mind the mess. We brought everything with us. Everything from a shop vac to the air pressure, um, the air pump thing. I even brought a ladder just in case I need to get some of the kids throw a frisbee and it lands on, lands on top of the rig. Um, I have extra water bottles. I have extension cords. I got, you know, all your supplies there, tarps. But either way, um, it's got lighting in here. The light stays on for about 15 minutes and it flickers on and off and then it shuts off automatically. Just turn on the light off, just off, on. That's simple enough. And even got an outlet out here. We used it, uh, uh, we used it uh, the other day to uh, run a toaster oven because I didn't want to stink up the RV. So pretty much there, one good thing about this rig, there's a lot of storage. Uh, even at the bottom here, uh, underneath this, after all this crap is moved out of the way, there's a spare tire in a wheel well. There's a uh, table. I, I never took the table out, but it's a small table. It's from this size to this size. It's a small table, but it, it's doable. Um, I personally haven't used it. So, all right, enough on that. And uh, these do lock. Okay, so it does lock here, and there's a key lock that goes there. So I recommend make sure you lock the rig before you start moving it because you never know if you're in a bad area or if the, the latch comes undone, you don't want the thing flopping open. And they are, seem pretty watertight. Um, I, I did leave the light on just at night one time to see if there's any, like, uh, you know, if you can see the light around the edges. It, it sealed it up pretty nicely once you locked it. So, um, again, it's not too much of an issue. I wouldn't put anything, uh, you know, that you wouldn't possibly get wet or ruined. Again, uh, your tires, 80 pounds. Make sure you uh, to check your tires. I did notice, I'm going to let Cruise America know, that there is a gash here. Uh, somebody um, probably took the tire and, uh, you know, curbed it, as uh, they like to call it, curbing tires. But there is a little gash there, so I'll keep an eye on that. We do have another further trip that we got to go to. All right, this here... Um, there's an access panel here. This is for the refrigerator. This is the back of the refrigerator. Now, for those who don't know, I didn't know this until recently, the refrigerator runs off propane. Amazing, propane. How does that work? I have no idea, the miracle of uh, physics. But it does, uh, runs off propane, and when you're hooked up to shore power, it does know when it's on electricity, it will shut off the propane and use electricity to run the refrigerator. And we'll cover the refrigerator on the inside. Uh, down here is the propane tank this is where you would fill up you would go to any one of the authorized dealers i guess they connected up there and um i was at three fourths at the beginning of my trip so uh we're already about four days in and you know for a family of four with showers and all that stuff uh we were starting three fourths so we it, it doesn't use a lot and we use the stove too so considering uh it, it's pretty uh energy efficient that's where they fill it up 
Uh, there is a door here. Obviously, this is the entrance. Uh, now, there's two locks on here, okay? Uh, one operates the uh, latch, and one operates as an actual deadbolt. Uh, so when you are driving down the road, make sure the deadbolt is uh, secure. And uh, basically, this here just operates the, the, the handle that can't be opened, and this here is a little deadbolt that pops, pops right on out. So, And there's a screen door, too. Uh, we're in Florida. We're not opening up the screen door. All right, so we'll move on to the next thing here. And it does, uh, it does uh, latch, and and this looks like a window, but there's no window here. It's just a silly little sticker with a dog winking at you. All right, uh, this here is the door holder. So you're loading in and out. You could leave the door open so it's not blush blowing in the wind. And again, Cruise America, or mostly all RVs that uh, I watched on YouTube, has a lot of storage. Uh, this here is where they, they had the, uh, the fresh water hose. So this is where our water is, our water supply. They don't recommend to drink the water that, that comes out of the faucets here. And I guess just a liability reason. But make sure um, you have bottled water with you for cooking and cleaning. Not cleaning, uh, cooking and drinking and uh, what, uh, consumable water. Uh, again, this is the mirror here. And again, um, again, this light was not working. This is your turn signal light. Uh, the driver's side was working. I wrote that up for them as well. Um, as far as driving the rig, um, I was comfortable driving with it. Uh, I've seen some people talk about uh, white knuckling the steering wheel. I could see that. Um, you know, if I did buy one, I'll probably get a steering stabilizer. Uh, that's everybody on Facebook, on forums, are saying that's like the money well invested. It's, you know, five, six hundred dollars for the stabilizer or so. And I did notice, you know, a little wear on the tire. So that means, and I'm not a mechanic, but I'm sure the alignment is not 100% well. But, uh, you know, it, it was, I was comfortable driving the rig. And then uh, a typical uh, Ford front end, uh, V10, uh, everything is self-labeled in the engine compartment. In fact, I'll go ahead and pop the hood. All right, I got the engine hood popped open. All right, so this is your battery. This operates, you know, the typical, you know, like a motor vehicle battery. Uh, does not operate the house batteries as well. Um, from what I understand, I think if you're plugged into shore power, it also charges the house batteries, which I demonstrated to you on the other side or showed you on the other side. And I think it charges this battery as well, but, but don't quote, quote me on it. All right, here, I mean, you gotta check your oils. Um, I had a little hard time finding the oil dipstick because I thought that was the oil dipstick, but now it's the transmission. Uh, the oil dipstick in this particular model is way down there. So just uh, make sure you have enough oil and just, you know, typical safety, maintenance, you know, pre-trip. For anybody who has a commercial driver's license, you know exactly what a pre-trip is. But uh, pretty, it's a V10. I don't know how many liters, but uh, it's a typical Ford engine. Um, they do get some good life out of it. Um, you know, uh, I was, you know, thinking about buying one of these rigs. Uh, it doesn't have a slide out, you know. It's a good beginner rig. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Just take it slowly and see if we like it. And uh, Cruise America has got them on their websites. In fact, they do have it on back order right now. So uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a waiting list for rigs. Gee, I wonder why. But anyways, uh, these motors, if they're well-maintained, they get a good 300,000 miles on them. Maybe not more if they're well-maintained. So, um, and the one thing I noticed with people selling motorhomes, now I don't know if I'll get uh, hate or likes about it, but um, you know, when you get to buy an, like a used RV, for like say for example, 2010 for example, 2010 with 28,000 miles on it, oh, you think, oh, that's great. Yeah, but my question is, how long has that rig sat there? You know, I mean, you know, we've been here since uh, Saturday afternoon. It's already, what day is this? Uh, Wednesday, I think today is. <laughs> I think I'm losing day, losing track of my days. Uh, Wednesday. And, you know, the rig hasn't driven. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I did start up the rig uh, this morning and yesterday just to make sure the batteries are charged up. I don't know. It's just uh, the uh, OCD in me, I guess. But, yeah, the, the question is, like, how long has that rig sat there? So, you know, when you're buying an RV, you know, ask yourself those questions. Yeah, beautiful. Low mileage. That's awesome. But on the flip side of it, you know, to ask yourself that question, how, how, uh, 
how deteriorated is the bushings or the uh, rubber parts or the you know valves or whatever whatever you know deteriorates on an en engine uh, over time i'm not a mechanic so i don't know if i'm using the right words all right i'll close all this right. up all right so this is the tour the inside of the rig i covered a lot of things on the outside uh you probably have noticed a lot of uh, rv rigs you can probably see some of them over there a lot of them have ladders on the back of it. Cruise America does not have any ladders going up on the rigs because they don't want you on the roof. I don't blame them because that's, you know, people don't care and careless and they'll be up there stopping their feet or whatever, which I don't blame them. So, um, you know, that's why I brought a regular ladder just in case something gets thrown up there and I could just, you know, fish it down. But I got no intentions of standing on the roof. It's, uh, not my place to be. All right, so let's uh, go inside the rig here. All right, Cruise America has these uh, awesome steps. Um, you know, take it or leave it. You know, they, you know they're a rental company. They, they want you know a quality, quality uh, rig. You know, with no like little to no maintenance. Um, I do recommend getting a little step stool. Um, in case you have bad knees or something like that. So we do have a little step stool, nothing dramatic. It's a little kitty step stool when the kids were little. And uh, just so help you get in and out. Or if you're on a, like an incline a little bit, you know, that will help you get in and out of the rig. But yes, so they do have this little wheel well type, uh, foot well, stairwell, whatever you want to call it. So, all right, let's go in. All right, over here uh, is the fire extinguisher, okay? typical and you know what how about that look at that I just noticed that right now and <laughs> yeah I did not know that that's not good that is not good it is empty that is not good um, I'll, I'll maybe a call I'll call uh, travel the travel folks and see and, and see what they could do uh, because it's always a good idea to have a working fire extinguisher when you're on these type of trips. All right, this here, uh, you got a couple switches here. One switch operates the actual porch light. And it is fairly bright, I do have to say. We were out here at night, it's sufficient enough. I mean, it's, you know, you're, it's, it does its job. It does its job. It's all LEDs and LED technology has gotten a lot better over the years. I remember when LEDs first came out, they were like barely even bright. Uh, this one here is uh, the lighting system on the floor. Okay, there's like four of them across the rail on the rig. I'll leave it on and I'll show you. All right, let's go inside. Come on, let's go inside. And uh, they do allow dogs. And a lot of uh, RV parks do not allow certain breeds. So be sure you check your uh, RV park where you're staying if they allow certain type of dogs. And, this is uh, no more than a 10 pound little dog. I know some RV parks don't allow, you know, uh, the aggressive breeds. Uh, contact your RV park to find out. All right, let's start with the cab. All right, so it's a typical Ford uh, E450. I think all the E-Class is the same thing. Typical, nothing special. Uh, this particular rig, uh, it's at 57,064 miles. Eh, it was close. <laughs> but your typical uh, gas gauges, nothing special. Um, trip onima, tack onima, uh, cruise control, uh, the heat, you know, the, um, the temperature of the engine, you know, nothing special. Uh, they do recommend when you uh, park your RV, just put the emergency brake on because it, it prevents from rolling back and forth. You know, when the vehicle's in park, you can still roll the vehicle back and forth. Uh, my do, you do feel people walking around there with a little bouncing. You know, again, that's what stabilizing bars does or stabilizing um, jacks, I guess. I don't know the right words. Uh, I'm sure uh, people are correcting me, screaming at their YouTube channel right now, my YouTube channel, and say, no, they're called this. No, whatever it is, uh, you do feel the people walking around, bouncing around. But uh, at least, uh, you know, eliminates that from uh, rolling back and forth. Uh, it's your typical uh, cab here. Over here, uh, straight above here, this does uh, pu push up to give you more headroom, but we left it down, not a big deal to me. This is another bed I'll show you uh, in a moment. All right, so uh, the air conditioning. This is another thing that wasn't really covered in the video, uh, in previous videos. You know, we're down here in Florida. Florida gets real hot. And I'm sure all the parts of the country as well, it does get pretty hot. Uh, this air conditioning is strictly for the cab only. Okay, uh, there's no rear air conditioning when you're driving down the highway. Okay, uh, 
okay? That's what the rig air conditioning does, but you need to run the generator to run that particular air conditioner. Um, every, when everybody sits into the actual rig itself, they're either sitting here or at this table. And I'm sitting here at the table and I have the main air conditioning turned off just because it's pretty loud and I don't want to uh, have, it's a lot of white noise. You know, that's, that's the only downfall, uh, but I'll talk more about the cab air conditioning. So I'm sitting here and I do feel the air conditioning and I'm comfortable. It's pretty hot out. It's probably in its mid, uh, almost 90 degrees outside now. And keep in mind, it is a vehicle. It is, it is going to get hot. It is, will get hot. It's not your typical, you know, being at home and have the insulated walls and, uh, you know, and you do feel the heat coming in here in the middle of the day. There is actually, you could bring your own uh, windshield covers from home. Uh, Cruise America does provide uh, these uh, wraparound type things and uh, they actually get tied up to this. This is a little more for privacy. Uh, you can wrap the cab around just to, uh, you know, for privacy, especially in the evening time, because when you have the lights on and it's dark out, yeah, you don't want to see your naked ass. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, this, uh, this is great. Uh, it, it keeps it, and we keep it just for shade. But you know, I, I'm I like light. I like to let the sun in, so I I rolled it up. So, but yes, right now the cab air conditioning, the engine is on, and uh, the cab air conditioning is running right now. All right, uh, down here uh, they have plenty of room. Uh, in this case, this is where our dog uh, sleeps and hangs out on his little bed. He loves that. Uh, right over here, uh, let's start with the air conditioning. So you get your typical heat, AC, typical motor vehicle, car, air conditioner. Uh, that uh, fan valve is strictly just for the cab only, okay? Uh, you do have two, uh, if you're old school, cigarette lighters, 12 volt uh, uh, plug-in things. Uh, the one on the left worked. The one on the right did not work. Don't know why. Kind of sucky. So I end up bringing one of these things, like an extender. Uh, you know, plug in one cigarette lighter, and then uh, you can plug up to three items. But uh, either way, there is no Bluetooth on these rigs or backup cameras, like I said a little while ago. Uh, again, you know, 2021. This is a 2019 rig. I'm not sure why they couldn't uh, just put it standard for Bluetooth. But I have a fix for that. They do have an input line here. Um, I know some of the newer iPhones, you need the adapter. Uh, to the lightning adapter to plug into that. Uh, that's what I did in my case. I plugged it in through uh, my adapter and I went to there and I hit the in inline button and the, the sound came over. And I do, and this here is a uh, charger uh, slash holder and it's a, um, a wireless charger. So I was charging at the same time while I was listening to music. So that's my way around it, just to give you an idea. Uh, it's a, just a suggestion. All right, so there is a light up here. Uh, it's very bright, they're all LEDs, uh, so the, the cab does light up uh, pretty brightly in the evening time. Um, it is controlled by the switch down by the turn signal, by that little uh, button, you cannot see it, but it's behind the, uh, behind the, uh, the turn signal thing. But it's your typical uh, front and rear, front and driver, driver and passenger airbags. You got your typical uh, glove box. It does have power windows and power locks. And if you have the correct rig and it does have power mirrors, if they work, this one doesn't work, sorry. So, but they do fold in. Uh, I fold it in, you have to push it in manually. It's not uh, electric fold in, uh, just so nobody walks into it or bumps their head on there. My kids are pretty short, no. Knowing them, they'll walk right into it. All right, so this is the longer RV, so you get the longer seat. Uh, this seat does jackknife into a bed. Uh, my daughter slept on it and it's fairly comfortable. Uh, what I do like the idea, I know the older rigs, they got the cloth seating. Um, you know, it's not a good idea to have the cloth seating because my daughter spilt water. Oh, it was simple enough, just took a rag and wiped it up. Same thing with this uh, table. Okay, uh, they all have seat belts. So there's two seat belts here, two seat belts there. And right now the seat belts are underneath the cushions. Uh, so there's three seat belts and obviously you got the front passenger. So this holds, theoretically, Cruise America wants you to have no more than seven people on here. Theoretically, you got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine seat belts. So you have nine places for people to sit, okay? Uh, up here is the bed. There's a bed up there, nothing major. Uh, so my son loves his little hideaway. Got the little curtain and you do have a light up there. 
okay? Uh, this was not covered in the other videos that people posted. Uh, here, they do have an outlet, okay? So you can plug your phone in. And this is where you actually plug your TV into. Uh, Cruise America does not provide TVs in their rigs. Not sure why, but okay, we had a small little TV. And again, it's hockey season. I want to watch my hockey game. So either way, uh, this will do. We have a little 24-inch TV. Perfect LED, uh, LCD, LED, whatever it is. And uh, you have to scan the channels because everything's all digital now. So, you know, versus HDMI. So, but you have to scan the channels. And it works perfectly well in my case. So, and what I love about this rig is a lot of storage. A lot of storage. We have like a lot of stuff here from our home that we brought in here. And it looks like not much in here, but everything's stored away. And I'll show you the cabinets very shortly. So, there's an outlet right there where I just showed you. There's another outlet right over there. Uh, it also has a USB uh, outlet as well. As you can see that white wire coming out and I do have a uh, extension cord to operate the TV or a couple other items. Uh, another good thing to bring, just a side note, a little portable vacuum and uh, the charger for it and that plugs in my coffee maker and all that. So uh, again, these outlets do not run while the engine's running unless the generator is running or you hooked up the shore power, just a heads up, okay? Uh, all these lights here are operated off of the house battery, okay? So you have uh, the left light, right light, and obviously off. And there's no like master switch to shut it. So you physically have to reach up to the ceiling. And I'm five foot seven. I could, I could reach it comfortably, but if somebody's four foot tall, they're gonna have an issue uh, shutting these lights on and off. So, you know, if you're a, sh uh, a shorter person and can't reach it, I would recommend maybe getting a pole or, you know, a broomstick. So here, I have a broomstick right here. I have a broomstick right here with a broom. And what you can do is just slide that off, slide that on. Just a suggestion, you know, but if you're tall enough to reach it, then you should have no, no issues, no issues. All right, so we have all these storage cabinets. Uh, we got a lot of stuff in here. I mean, just we, just we just threw stuff in there. I mean, now keep in mind when you're going down the highway, you know, things are gonna be bouncing around. So just remember that. So don't put anything like, you know, like glass, you know, up in the rear of the cabinets, make sure it's up the front. So if you have to slam on the brakes, at least, you know, things will shift or crack or break. But either way, so that's our storage for that. Again, you have extra storage for the beds that are. Uh, this here, we have extra storage for, you know, pots, pans, towels. Same thing over here. Uh, more storage. More storage over the doorway. Great. It does come with a couple hooks. So hang your car keys, hang the RV car keys, and uh, we have a garbage bag, in this case, hanging up over here. And obviously, this is the uh, exit. Um, the curtains. The curtains are... Um, they're darkening, they're, they're good. Uh, you know, they're not fancy, but I do like the idea because, you know, being, being you know, a, a rental company, they, they're looking for stuff that will, you know, that, that will last, you know what I mean? So I hate for this to be blinds and it gets crushed by a kid running into the window, whatever. But they have these curtains on these two little rods here and they have Velcro. Just pull this shut, seal it all up, and you're good to go. And it's pretty, Darkening. I mean, it's not blackout, but it's sufficient enough. Okay. So next here, um, the uh, this also turns to a bed. All right. So uh, I never tried it yet. So basically, you take these cushions out. This table, uh, you take this pole out, and the pole stores right into that little uh, slide thing or that little pocket thing, and that's where the pole stores. Take the cushions out, and you take this pole out, and you lift the table up, and the table drops, and then it's like one flat thing. Put the cushions back on, and put your sheets on. Now, Cruise America does not provide any type of sheets or linens and all that stuff. So don't forget to pack those those type of items when you uh, come on board. Um, I do think they do have a uh, you know an upcharge or upsell, like most companies do. You know they do offer pots and pans, but that comes with the price. But if you if you're going to be at your house, you know, to load up, load up those uh, those items. Use the use that money for, uh, you know, fun activities with the family. All right, so uh, that's that. Down here is the fuse box. Okay, uh, it's nothing spectacular. It's just a typical fuse box. Uh, it's a bunch of obviously a fuse box. Um, I did pop a fuse early this week. I was. Uh, overloaded the uh, outlet with a couple of different items and it popped the fuse so 
that's that's that. Down there, uh, from what I understand, this is a um, O2 carbon monoxide detector, and it says here, please test me. So let's try it out. Okay, well that's that's it. And, all right, Noki, the dog Noki. All right, you know. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yep. Okay, that see it works. But either way, um, uh, underneath here is the uh, the heater. So if you uh, are RVing during the winter time, this is the, the where the heat comes from. It does use the propane and the house batteries to operate the fan. But for a limited amount of time, there's a wall sticker I can show you. So, all right, let's uh, move on to the kitchen. Uh, this particular model, I do see other videos with the older rigs. Uh, they didn't have this glass type. Uh, covering over the stove you definitely need space you know we brought a lot of appliances from the house um, we bought our own ice maker all right I know you guys say what in the world why do you bring an ice maker this is a special ice maker just getting a little sidetracked this is called a nugget ice maker it's sort of like hospital grade or sonic ice it's chewable it's uh, made by Opal I think GE bought it out but uh, yeah just type in Google Opal ice maker and uh, we love it. We love it. All right, so we brought our air fryer, we brought a toaster oven, and we brought, brought our pots and pans for the stove. The stove uh, works like a typical gas stove. Uh, the sink, it's a decent sized sink, considering for an RV. Now, you don't have a lot of counter space, so um, that's why I'm glad the newer models have this uh, glass thing over the stove because, you know, we use the stove, we move the toaster oven somewhere else, and uh, we use the stove. Uh, up here, uh, there is an exhaust fan. It does have a little light, not very bright, but maybe good for a night light. That's about it. Uh, it does have a fan portion. You're probably saying to yourself, well, it's going to blow smoke inside the rig. No, it won't. It blows the smoke outside the rig, which is awesome because uh, we use the air fryer and we put the air fryer right underneath this thing. We plugged it into the outlet that's next to it and uh, it blew the smoke straight outside. So, that, uh, perfect. Uh, we used the microwave for about 30 seconds yesterday. Microwave, nothing special. Just a regular standard microwave, nothing crazy. Uh, again, more lights over the, uh, the stove. Lots of storage, that's what I love about this. Uh, they do even have little storage areas for uh, paper plates and a lot of other junk. All right, up next, I'm gonna show you the control panel. All right, so this is the, I guess, like the brains of the RV. Um, this is a little less to be de de uh, desired. Uh, like I mentioned a little while ago to you, that uh, I left the gray tank open so I could just drain the water out because when the tank was full the other day, I pressed it, it still said empty. The sensor is not working. <laughs> so uh, even, even with the black tank, you press that, and the tank, black tank I know has got stuff in it, and it still shows empty, okay? Uh, the fresh water in this particular rig, the fresh water in this particular rig, uh, we're just on empty because I drained it out because I didn't want to carry the weight around. So that was uh, that one works in this particular rig. The battery life for the house battery, perfect, good, awesome. And this is your natural gas. We're over two thirds if we even saw the meter outside. So uh, don't rely on these lights. Uh, if these lights do not work correctly, you'll know <laughs> when the, the sink starts filling up with water from the drain, it's not draining, it's time to empty out your, uh, your tanks. And fortunately, if you're in an RV park, you'll, know, you'll have a sewer line and you could just drain it right there. All right, so this here is the water pump, okay? This will operate the water pump uh, through the water tank. We got a little water left in the tank. Uh, the water pressure is fairly well, good. Nothing spectacular. It's enough to get the job done. All the fixtures in the RV, just like if we connect to uh, land water. So this here is the water heater. Um, we turn on the hot water heater when we are ready to use it or ready to go in the shower. No sense to waste the propane if you're gonna be gone all day just to keep the hot water hot in the tank. That's just unnecessary. So, um, and also here you have your uh, generator use. So in this particular unit it has 152 hours, 0.6. Uh, Cruise America, as of uh, this, as a recording, this is uh, they charge you about uh, three dollars and fifty cents an hour. Okay, 
So uh, just keep in mind, you know, don't, don't run it if you don't have to. And again, this air conditioner is off right now, okay? Um, I do have the AC on in the cab right now on, and it feels comfortable in here, but it's getting a little warm, but it's enough to, you know, if you're tooling down the highway, you really shouldn't be walking around, you know, driving, or walking around while you're driving. A little dangerous, I don't recommend that. But, so I have the engine running, the AC on, and I do feel the AC standing here, okay? The AC is kind of a little bit loud, okay? So you have your low fan, high fan, and then you have cool and then high cool. Uh, the quality AC is pretty good. I have to say it was pretty, let me this way, we were very cold overnight and we like it cold. We like it uh, cold with the AC on and all that stuff. This here, you get very chilly. Obviously with the sun beating down on the rig during the day, yeah, it's going to get warm in here quickly. So it's gonna compensate uh, the temperature. Um, the air will flow out of this vent here, and it's not as strong out here. I don't know why. Maybe it's just something either with this rig or this AC design. I don't know. But this one here is strong enough to blow all the way to the back bedroom. And as you see there, I have a fan there. I certainly bring a fan with you when you go on a camp out. Right now I have the fan set back there just to blow the cool air back up into the front of the rig. It's just a personal preference. You don't have to, but that's my recommendation. And we do not sleep with the fan on at night because this fan, this air conditioning, does a great job. All right, so this is a, uh, so let me shut this air conditioner off. And it does, it does, uh, you can control the temperature. And there's a little thermostat, so in the middle of the night, uh, during the nighttime, we just bring it up a little higher so the air the compressor, compressor turns off so it's not blowing cold air constantly overnight on you but during the daytime i always leave it on the extra cold because it it gets pretty hot in this rig all right so getting back to the uh, generator thing so how to start the generator okay you have to prime it so it uses your gasoline tank uh, off the rig itself the same gas that operates the engine and you have to prime it. And uh, there's a little thing here that'll tell you when it's already primed. But uh, just a little side note from what I understand, the rig, the air conditioning, I'm sorry, the air conditioning, the generator will not work when you're below like a uh, quarter of a tank left. Uh, that's good for safety reasons because you don't want to run your gas tank dry and then you're stuck at a campsite <laughs> with no gas and you can't drive out. So that's a good uh, fail safe right there. All right, so this one here, you have to hold the stop button and every rig is different right now it's priming okay i don't know what these numbers mean it just changes some other numbers so you hold it down there and it's priming right now i can feel it in my feet the little vibration of the uh, primer and it's just sucking the gasoline out of the tank bring it up to the generator and you uh, so lift it up i don't know how long some some rigs have a little light that goes out i don't know the situation but i just held it down long enough to start it. I don't know the, what those numbers mean again. And you hold start. There we go. So the generator is now started. You did see the lights flicker. Um, I don't know if the starter is starting to go because as you can see, the battery is full. So it wasn't like I wasn't I wasn't, uh, you know, low on battery. So it did give a little harder start. Again, maybe it's, it's all the generators or maybe it's just this particular one, the starter may be starting to go. But right now the generator is running. Now in order to run the generator, remember you gotta plug it into that little outlet that you saw inside the little cubby. Right now I'm plugging into the shore power that's the, with the electric meter. Obviously I'm running and wasting gas right now, but and I'm paying for this right now. <laughs> so uh, when you're done using the generator, hit stop, okay? Actually, you know what I'm gonna do right now? I'm gonna start it back up again. Maybe it just needs a second. Hey, look at that, it's not even starting. Okay, well, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why I noticed that. All right, so let's uh, let's go out to the rig here. And like I mentioned, there is a way to start the rig, uh, start the air, uh, the generator from outside the unit. 
All right, so there's little tabbies here. I wasn't going to demonstrate this, but there is little tabbies here and this whole thing comes off because that's what you have to do in order to check the oil. So, all right. All right, so you got a prime. This one here is a light. All right, it says here, indicator light flashes. So crank means uh, rapid flash. I guess that means it's cranking. Uh, service required, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's try it. started right up. Um, it's not that, it's it's loud enough, but it's not uncomfortably loud that you can't hear anything inside. And you can close this rig thing here. It does muffle out the noises a little bit. Just keep in mind, that's the exhaust. It will get hot, so just watch your animals or kids away from that. And don't breathe in the uh, gases. All right, so it's the same thing. You can shut it off from the inside. And this here is the oil. They recommend you check the oil every six hours. Um, this this uh, generator does need some oil, so uh, it's barely on the uh, dipstick. And I think Cruise America gives you an allowance of like seventy-five dollars that you have to if you have to buy a new hose or something like that. But uh, you know, again, the rules do change, so I recommend just make sure you uh, call travel assistance and let them uh, give the authorization because I hate for you to spend out money and next thing you know, you don't get your money back. So I would recommend, even if it's a $10 item, a, you know, maybe a quart of oil, I would call travel assistance just to, just to cover your rear end, you know? But uh, as of recording, you don't have to call if it's under $75, so. All right, let me get this, um, this uh, cover back on and we'll continue on with the touring inside. All right, so I am back in the rig now. Uh, let's just try it just for, just for the fun of it. Okay, now it fired up. So, I don't know, maybe something with this particular rig, or this generator. So, either way, the the air, the uh, generator is now running now. Um, so, everything should run inside this rig. Remember, make sure it's plugged in. Right now, I'm plugged into the shore power. So, uh, again, they charge, as of recording, $3.50 per hour. When I got into this rig, it was at 152.0. I played around with it a little bit <laughs> to see how strong it was, just for the fun of it, just to see, you know, uh, just to see how it worked and all that stuff. Uh, now, I get mixed reviews with people saying, oh, you're not supposed to drive it on with the air conditioning, I mean, the generator while you're driving, you know. I, some people say yes, some people say no, you know, it's up in the air. But like I said, the cab air conditioning is strong enough to cool down the passenger area, and the passenger area is right here. Um, you know, it's, you have to have a seatbelt on while you're cruising down the road. So, I mean, you can't be laying down in bed. You never know what will happen. Either way. So, uh, and again, the air conditioning above me is turned off right now for this video purpose. All right, let's move on to the refrigerator. So, the refrigerator itself is not your typical, typical um, residential refrigerator. Okay. Uh, this is a RV refrigerator. Again, it runs on propane and electric. And it does have a setting right up there, okay? It does have a setting to sense if you are plugged into shore power, then it automatically shuts the propane feature off and then turns on the actual electricity portion so you're not using propane. Once I disconnect, it will sense it and then start using propane to run the refrigerator. Now, they say the refrigerator takes a long time to cool down. Um, I'm not sure why it does. It uh, maybe doesn't have a fan. I don't know what this technology is. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there watching this video understand that, uh, how, how these things work. But either way, um, when you do uh, go in the refrigerator, especially my kids, they love to stare at the refrigerator with the door open and make their selection. And that was a blanket rule. You, you could do that at home, but don't do it here because once you open these doors, they do latch, they do lock. So this is a latch here. You can't just go like this but you gotta physically push it until it snaps. Now the door can't open. Now you just pull the lever open. And the freezer itself does get very cold. Everything stayed frozen so far on our trip. So um, the, here the actual refrigerator itself, just a quick demonstration. It's okay, it's small, but for what we got, we're using it for, perfect. It does have a light in there. Um, I didn't have any problems with condensation, no, no water leaks, no nothing, so. Uh, 
not even not even an issue. Uh, down here uh, is more storage. It goes way to the back. We just have our water bottles in there. Um, as you probably saw, I have some Walmart bags in there, or, you know, grocery bags. I know a lot of uh, states um, are outlawing them, but if you could get your hands on them, they make awesome little garbage bags. All right, so we got more storage underneath here, on the utility, underneath the sink. We got three drawers. Uh, they all have magnets on there, so they don't fly open as you're driving. Uh, you do need to tug on it a little bit. My daughter had a very hard time pulling the, the, uh, the doors open, so it may be hard for some people, maybe with arthritis, whatever. Uh, down here, these are just utility uh, things. They don't open. I guess, you know, the water heater, I think, is on the outside of this, and maybe some more plumbing, uh, whatever is behind here, so it's, it's nothing access. All right, so let's move on to the bathroom. And this is also here, the light I was telling you about. So uh, they do have... Uh, one light, two light, and there's one in the bathroom, if I'm not mistaken. Three light, okay? Uh, they do have a uh, lighting up here. Uh, they're all LEDs, so it doesn't run hot. Uh, they do have an exhaust fan, and it is nice with this particular rig. Uh, it's not cranked. It's an actual handle. You pull in the hang up the handle, and you close it completely. Um, I, I do notice on the outside they do have a covering on there, but I don't recommend driving down the road with these things open because you don't want to be responsible if this thing should break or something like that. But I do see a, a cover protector on there to keep away from the rain. But uh, it's a little cheesy ass fan in there, so it's, you know, take it like it's worth. It's nothing major. Uh, your typical uh, RV toilet. Some toilets I know are uh, plastic in RVs. Well, this particular one is porcelain. So uh, it's uh, definitely uh, meant to be used for commercial base. Um, you know, most people obviously prefer porcelain versus plastic because you never know. Eventually you fall on it the wrong way, you sit down on the wrong way, you may break it, but you know, either way, take it like it's worth. Now it's your typical, not a typical residential toilet. Uh, it's got a little lever on the side with a full foot pedal. So basically you press it down and the water goes down and then you gotta tap on it very lightly to fill up the toilet. Um, if you have kids, try to get them in the habit to fill up the toilet because the next uh, child that comes in there does their uh, number twos and doesn't have water in there, you're, you're gonna have a lot of uh, markings. Let's put it that way. Uh, the sink, it's a typical small little RV sink. I did notice, I don't know if it's for this particular model, but uh, it's, it, I thought this was broken when I got into the rig. Oh, when I first rented it, I was like, oh great, this sink is broken. No, not really. So basically you lift it up, okay? You want cold, bring it over to the cold and press it down. That will turn on the cold water. If you want warm, bring it over to the left side and then push it on down. And within seconds, the water is getting warm, okay? Um, it's, yeah, it's just warm enough. I don't have the hot water heater on right now, but it is getting warmer. And to shut it off, bring it down to the middle and shut it off. And again, this water goes down to the gray tank. Toilet goes down to the black tank. All right, uh, the toilet itself, it's kind of odd. I mean, if you're a short person, maybe I recommend a, a little step stool, okay? Uh, so maybe to climb up on there and uh, have a seat per se. <laughs> so um, we do have, we did bring in little carpets from the house, uh, bath mats. Uh, right now I took them out because it's time for me to do some laundry today. And uh, again, Walmart bags are your best friends uh, for this uh, because I know from what I understand toilet paper, a uh, certain type of toilet paper, you really can't put down the toilet. That's probably why the lights don't work because the gunk is probably on the sensor and the sensor doesn't read it. That's my speculation, but um, you know, I know it's kind of gross, and that, but as long as you keep up with these bags, you shouldn't have any issue. You know, maybe after you use the bathroom, put toilet paper in there and throw the bag away, you know, so I mean, you, know, you make it you, you make it like it is so all right so you have your typical uh, mirror and a lot of storage okay there's much more storage up there it, it's amazing and more storage down there I mean it's it's perfect uh, it's a little tight but uh, and what I loved about this this actually becomes a private area so the door opens up wide enough and it doesn't seal it it's not airtight seal but just enough to give you a little privacy. So if you want to sit in on the toilet, leave the door open, you could do that. Or you could leave this door open for extra privacy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. And these uh, hinges is not your typical hinges. So they say, oh, can you see between? No, you can't. They got these tight, 
type of hinges here, so uh, you know it's, it's very hard to see. And if you have like friends and family coming in here, then you could do what you need to do and be private, or just close the door. All right. So uh, the shower, the shower, the shower is um, a typical RV shower. It's it's small. Okay, I do have to say. I mean, compared to my residential shower that could hold up to like four or five people, it's so huge. This is uh, definitely a culture shock to us, <laughs> but it's doable, okay? The only thing I don't like about it, um, you're, you're over the wheel, okay? And uh, the, you're over the wheel, so you do have a step. And I recommend bringing a, a bath mat with you because I hate for you to step out and then slip. Um, I caught myself a couple times, you know, it's kind of odd to actually walk out of a shower and, and have a large step. So just just keep that in mind. If you're a short person with bad knees, maybe just use a little step, like a little step stool like I have outside the RV. So that's maybe a good thing to uh, bring on your trip. All right, uh, the water pressure is so-so. It's nothing, it's nothing major. It's uh, nothing major. Um, some of the rigs I have seen uh, they do have uh, glass shower doors. This one here has a shower curtain. And again, uh, they need to change the shower curtain because it's kind of grungy. But uh, I recommend when you're in the shower, keep the shower curtain in the inside so you don't get any water all over the floor. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's decent. You know, it's, um, you know uh, five foot seven, you may have a little head problem with the headroom. But either way, it, it does its job. And some RV parks that you go to do have... Uh, showers uh, in their little clubhouse type deal, but when you take a shower you can close the door and you're good to go um, I recommend leave this door open like during the day uh, just to air it out or after a shower because you know The steam is in there and there's no air conditioning. All right, so into the bedroom. Okay uh, Today's laundry day. So uh, our pillows don't have any pillowcases on them right now, but uh, this is the typical standard bed It was okay yeah, it was nothing major. Uh, I did get some good sleep, yeah, but everybody's different. So they, when you do rent the RV itself, they do have this plastic um, um, covering type thing with a zipper on there to show the actual mattress. And the mattress is even in plastic as well. So uh, if, if you're you know concerned about the crunching noises, it really didn't bother me, but I recommend bring you know, a couple sheets, maybe a heavy blanket to maybe muffle out the noises. I uh, didn't have any issues with the... Uh, uh, you know getting hot again this air conditioning does wonders it's super cold you know it's it blows us straight from that unit from that unit into the bedroom so it, we got cold I mean we were looking for extra blankets let me put it that way all right so it is a little tight here but you're okay you know again the same thing with the curtains the curtains have the velcro and you know you can slide it open and uh, you get your light in there okay uh, underneath this rig here is the holding tank for the water so uh, I'll quickly show you that. So you lift up the mattress, you pick up this thing here, and that's where the water tank is. That's why the bed seems like a little higher than a typical bed. So that's the tank there. I don't have very much water in there. And again, uh, Cruise America gives you, you know, the 40, 50 gallons of water, 45 gallons of water in the tank, and they do expect you to return it. Sorry about that, got a phone call. But yeah, so this is uh, the mechanisms to uh, drain the tank. Um, as I said, Cruise America does fill, fill this up for you and they recommend you to re return it full, otherwise they charge you an awful lot of money to fill this thing back up. So um, if you're gonna be at a, uh, at a park with, a, with a, short, a short water and short power, no sense to drive around with several hundred pounds of water in your rig. It'll only drop your gas mileage. Then you got your other equipment on board, you know, so all that stuff. I drained this and there's a drain valve all the way down there. Uh, there's uh, this particular rig, there's a drain valve, I think straight ahead. And it actually just, dr just drops it to the bottom of the, uh, the rig and drains into the street or the sidewalk or whatever. Um, this is how you will like winterize the system per se. Um, again, every rig may be different. Uh, the water pressure on this system is fairly okay. I was able to wash your hands and run the sink at the same time, and I did notice the pump gets stronger, so the pump is smart enough to know, okay, the demand is higher, let's pump more water. So uh, don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, one speed pump and you turn on all the valves and you get like a trickle out of everything. It was strong enough. So uh, either way, it's in, in this underneath this bed here, and it's got a little cover and just slap the bed back down and 
have a good night. <laughs> uh, window here, same thing with this type of curtains. Um, again, I like this uh, design. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier and they stay open and you do feel the heat coming through the window. So, you know, during the day, maybe just keep it closed. Lots of storage. Lots of storage. I do have to say there's a drawer there. There's a cabinet there. Cabinet, cabinet. Uh, two drawers and a cabinet. I got the overbed lighting. One side and there's a switch over there for the other side. I got the roof lighting. Got a roof vent. Uh, you got two hooks. So uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I wish there was a little more hooks. Yeah, you know. Uh, this one here, this particular rig, it's got a privacy curtain. Um, this is broken. Uh, this actually fell out of the ceiling the other day. I just screwed it back in, but it's, the holes need to be re, re-drilled or something like that. So either way, there's a privacy curtain here. You could close it back up and get a little privacy back here. It's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, access panel to the, um, uh, the shower for maintenance or something like that. This here will operate the um, uh, the little nightlight thingies here. So again, we got one there, one in the bathroom, one in the entrance way uh, for the nightlight. And this here operates the light for inside the shower. So it is a pretty bright light. Um, it's well sufficient to take a shower at night. And obviously this is a skylight, so. All right, so that will conclude our tour of the Cruise America. Uh, this is the, let's say the 30 foot, the biggest one that they have, Cruise America RV. So, uh, so far our stay has been pretty good. And uh, other than that, uh, I, hopefully I covered everything and hopefully it makes your decision of uh, renting through Cruise America. Uh, just make sure you do your research. Just make sure you do your research and make sure you know uh, what to bring, uh, what to not to bring. Uh, knowing the charges and keep in mind Cruise America and my contract um, was actually uh, I'll, I'll say the pricing because it does change this actually this particular week the pricing went up dramatically but I re reserved this thing about four months four or five months ago uh, we were paying $95 a night plus 35 cents a mile and then um, for this same week because I like to check the rates make sure they're all good you know nothing changed this uh, same rig went for $275 a night plus 35 cents a mile. So uh, they run promotions, check it out. Uh, they do have a uh, rebate program. So if you do buy a rig through Cruise America, uh, you can you can uh, use your credits. So up to $3,000. So we have two trips planned. So this uh, trip and then our other trip will be over the $3,000 rental and they'll credit us back within six months of this contract date. So we're gonna return the rig back from uh, our trip this weekend and it'll be six months from that day from what I understand or the beginning. It's, it's either beginning or after when, we re when you return it, they refund the monies that you laid out up to $3,000 towards basically uh, if you buy a rig through Cruise America. So it's a good good way to get into the front door. This is a good way to try it out. And again, this doesn't have any slide outs. doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but for a beginner, I like it. All right, so uh, I didn't want to show my uh, mug on there because it's pretty outside. So have you look at the landscaping of this uh, RV park. Uh, for those who are wondering, this is um, Cabana Club. This is in Arbondale, Florida. This is a fairly brand new re re RV resort. They got a lot of um, uh, activities, a tiki bar, mini golf, a pool, a slide. They have the arcade. They got a laundry area. They got a business area. They got a workout area. They have so much activities going on here and, and honestly i'm spoiled <laughs> so if i end up going somewhere else i'm gonna be looking for the nice resort style pool and all that good stuff but it is what it is you know you make the best of whatever rv park you're at and it's called cabana club is in arbondale florida and uh i may uh do a video on that as well so all right everybody um if you uh i also do a podcast if you're interested in listening to, uh, if you love podcasts, I have a podcast called I Can Relate to That. Uh, I've been doing a podcast for a little over a year and a half at this point. We got about, uh, f as to date, we got about uh, almost about 50 episodes in. And I got myself, a co two and co two co-hosts. Uh, we had a couple of celebrities on my show. And uh, if you like podcasting and uh, we talk about stuff that we could all relate to one way or another, you know, so... 
Uh, again, I can relate to that. We're on all major platforms, Apple, Spotify, Our Heart Radio, Pandora, uh, Podbean, uh, TuneIn Radio, all the major platforms. So go ahead and give it a listen, listen to it. I can relate to that. And uh, you can search for that and like and subscribe to that. All right, everybody. Uh, this is my review of the Cruise America. This unit's a 2019 Ford uh, chassis, and I think it's made by Thor Majestic. I think it's the brand name. So, but that's my tour of it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Give a like if you like it. All right, take care.